You're listening to Workplace Perspective, an employment law podcast presented by Sapphire Legal. Workplace Perspective is a regular podcast series for employers and employees focusing on education, training, and the law to help organizations of all sizes develop and maintain successful workplace relationships. The opinions expressed by guests on Workplace Perspective do not necessarily reflect those of Sapphire Legal or its attorneys and should not be considered legal advice. And now, here's your host, founder and principal attorney at Sapphire Legal, Teresa McQueen. Thank you, James, and welcome everyone to Workplace Perspective, where we are striving to raise the bar at workplaces everywhere. On today's show, we're talking with C Digital Lab CEO Andre Berengian about the importance of creating a positive workplace culture in emerging startups. Andre is going to share his perspective as a CEO of the unique startup laboratory that is C Digital Labs, a company that designs, builds, and executes growth strategies for established businesses and visionary startups. It's going to be a great show. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The opinions expressed by guests on Workplace Perspective do not necessarily reflect those of Sapphire Legal or its attorneys and should not be considered legal advice. You're listening to Workplace Perspective, an employment law podcast presented by Sapphire Legal. Welcome back to our listeners and welcome to Workplace Perspective, Andre Berengian. Thank you. Um, So, Andre, before we get started, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about you and a little bit about C Digital Labs? Sure. So, I am the CEO of C Digital Labs, and um, uh, so my background is um, I have been an entrepreneur and tech executive uh, for a very long time, a couple decades, uh, in the ad tech space uh, and generally software and, and hardware spaces. And uh, C Digital was kind of a brainchild of uh, myself and my business partner, Justin. And what we thought about doing is finding a way to create startups in mass or in scale. And so instead of working on one idea at a time and doing it sequentially, could we create a platform by which we could do innovation on multiple different subjects and multiple different problems all at once? And so uh, by virtue of doing that, what we do is we build our own startups. We work with other startups and uh, accelerate them. And then we bring that know-how to uh, uh, large corporations as well and allow them to take part in this whole startup ecosystem. I, it's such a great concept. Did you, did you just get an award for something? Um, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess an award. Um, uh, just uh, maybe a three weeks ago or so, um, uh, it was announced that I am part of the OC500. And so that's a list that's put together by the Orange County Business Journal for 500 uh, influential people in business in the Orange County region. Well, that's great. I'm very Thank honored you. to have you on Thank today's you. show. Well, I'm sure with your background that you've seen successes and failures when it comes to startup businesses, right? Yes, absolutely. Went both on. So from an employment law perspective, I tend to see both sides. And I see companies who, in most cases, grew too fast. I get the calls. Yes, we've gone from 100 to 1,000 employees in like a week. Can you help us? <laughs> to which I laugh, like you did. And, you know, but they fail. I I think a lot of times in those regards, they get in trouble because they don't hire the right people. They don't hire people who know how to manage people or to create a great work environment. And so then, of course, the flip side of that is the employees who are suing those companies because Hmm. they didn't hire the right people. (laughs) They didn't (laughs) know how to manage people. And so when I started thinking about doing a show on the importance of creating a positive work environment and the problems that so many startups face, I thought about C-Digital and how you and your team have created such a great workplace and the fact that you're continually working with startups. I think that's such a unique yeah. platform. So I wanted to get your perspective on a lot of things. But first, from a C-suite perspective, what's your philosophy when it comes to employee engagement in the startup sure. community? So... Um There's a few things that we subscribe to. So one of them is um, because we work on a large host of of projects and different things, it creates a lot of engagement because there's always a problem that uh, resonates with someone that they can help solve. So if someone has um, a, a desire to work in a certain type of field, maybe it's fintech might be building something in that space. Maybe it's logistics. Um, so there's there's a, a, a host of different things. They're not solving just one problem, but they're solving a lot of problems. And I think most of the folks that you know, we, we know and folks that are in, in startup land are very cerebral. They really want to work to solve problems. And the fact that we give them so many problems to solve is, is, is a really good thing. The other thing is we focus on results. And so we really don't manage to 
much of anything other than results. The question is, um, if we are going to see success in a particular startup, what are the metrics that we want to measure? And then we just go right after that. And so everyone is really aligned on that. And then the last thing is we look at um, really creating work-life balance. We have uh, a, a lot of flexibility for people to kind of come and go as they need in order to do the things they need to do in their life, maybe children, take care of children or other things. Um, and then secondarily, we have a lot of fun. And we have a lot of cool activities and events that the team plans. Um, we take people, we take the team places, we go places, we do things. And so that creates a, a little bit of balance um, to all the hard work that we do. I think that's great. I love the work-life balance idea. Not so much for... I like the touchy-feely aspect of it, but I think that um, with the law recently changing, as a case came down called Dynamex, it's all mm. about independent contractors versus right. employees. But in talking about that case, I, I talked about it and I wrote about it a lot, but it was this idea that, okay, here's a great opportunity in the workplace to rethink what does it mean to work? What does it mean to go to work every day? Right. And can you know can businesses be more flexible when it comes to that? Can we yeah. start a change in that regard? So I like the sounds of that. Sounds like you're already yeah. on your way to doing that, and I think that's really cool. Um, and the variety and diversity, I like that too. And even though you guys, you know, you get to work with different, you know, again, doing your own startups and then working with people who are starting yes. up. But I think that's something people can take into their own business. Variety and diversity. Absolutely. You know, give your employees something project minded or yeah. you know results minded like you said yeah. i like that idea absolutely i like that idea well currently there are four generations in the workplace and arguably millennials make up a significant amount of that mm -hmm. i think i read something last year that had them at something like 35 percent of the general workforce wow. so um and you have a relatively young workforce yes we do right so what's what's the average the average, the average age, like, I, I'd say in the 20s. Yeah. I, I wouldn't know exactly uh, an exact number, but I'd say probably in the uh, kind of late 20s. Yeah. And is it for them, it's not It's not like a first, a lot of those are not first-time jobs, no. right? Second and, no. yeah. Second, third, you know, not first. Yeah, not first-time jobs. But still, I, I think with such a young workforce, and what was your goal um, with C-Digital when it came to creating the unique workplace culture that you've got going on there? You know, we, I, I, I worked in the large corporate America many, many years ago, and there was a lot of things that I didn't like about that. And um, the, the, the rigidity and uh, the structure, I think in some instances it makes a lot of sense to do that, right? So if you have, uh, if you're in a massive manufacturing environment and everything has to be done in sequentially and in order, otherwise somebody gets hurt or something, that makes sense. In our world, what I looked at is said, look, if we're, really results oriented and focused on the outcome, then we can give folks the flexibility that they need to, um, uh, to, to basically work in this environment. So we have folks that work remotely. We have, uh, but then they come into the office on an as needed basis. Um, we have uh, a, a, a variety of different start times. So some people start early, some people start later. So um, uh, it depends on what their schedule is and what's going on in their lives. Um, you know, work from home is, is, a, is a common thing, but you know, as much as we do R&D and when we're doing research and development on new things, everybody should be and needs to be together, we found ways to leverage technology to allow them to, to, to work remotely and ultimately still have that same impactfulness. Uh, so I tried to do away with some of the things that I thought was kind of wrong with big corporate culture and provide the flexibility and provide an environment where people can really um, kind of stretch their legs and their brains and think and then and then and come up with creative solutions to really big problems. I like that because you didn't come up with a slogan. When I ask you about work, you know, how most people come up with a workplace culture and they go, okay, let's get the marketing people in here. Nothing right. against marketing people, but let's get the marketing <laughs> people in here and let's get a slogan. Let's get, you know, it's, I, you know, I could, I've, I've seen so many over the years that are just that crack me up. But that's like you and I talked about in preparing for this show. That's not culture. No. The no, slogans it's not. are not the culture, it right? Is not. Absolutely not. In your philosophy, it's. Uh, the people. People. People are the culture. Um, the, the thing that, you know, we, we were talking about earlier is. Um, when I hear people say, boy, at this company, XYZ, we sure need to change the culture to be X or Y. Um, it isn't something where you bring in, like to your point, marketing people or a consultant or you rebrand or something like that. Right. It's really what you're saying is you need different people. If you want a culture that is, um, you know, moves fast, is nimble, um, acts in a smart way, uh, takes ownership, you need to find people 
that embody those things. And then ultimately the people are your culture. Right. I love that. I love that. So how do you think, well, I, I think you probably agree with me, right? I think that the culture, creating that culture really is top down, right? Yes, 100%. And so what I see is where, you know, CEOs start out with great ideas. You know, I want to create this type of a work environment, or like you said. But then they get busy mm -hmm. because they're small mm -hmm. and something takes precedent. And fostering that message and fostering that culture gets delegated. And then the message gets diluted. Sure. As it gets delegated down the line, and pretty soon it's just, you know, again, it's a, it's a, it's we've worked it down to three points, and it's in the handbook if you want to know what it is, or go look on the corporate, you know, the corporate message board or whatever. But I, you are really actively engaged even after all this time, and I think that it's amazing. How do you, how do you keep yourself so focused on continuing what you started in the first place? Um. I, I don't. I don't know how to be any other way. <laughs> just, I love that. Just have to be. Just have to be laser focused on it. Um, you know, if I if I can, what, what, what you said about you know the delegation. Um, I do spend a lot of time away from the office. Uh, I, I it just calls for a lot of travel. You know, so right. I'm, I'm in Northern California, East Coast, West Coast, wherever it may be. And so what I've I, I kind of live by the rules that I mentioned. It's just that the people are the culture. Um, I've hired some amazing, amazing people that in my absence can do the same thing and even in my presence can do the same thing. We really all work together as one big giant family. And that's really kind of the types of folks that, that work at C Digital. I love it. I love it. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, more thoughts from Andre on the importance of creating a positive workplace culture and some tips for building a better startup. Awesome. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Learn everything you need to know about the new legislative and regulatory changes for 2019 by joining Sapphire Legal and Owen Dunn Insurance on January 15th for our annual 2019 Employment Law Update. Visit our website at sapphirelegal.com for more details or call us at 949-535-5266. Imagine what it would feel like to lose everything. Your job, your home, your family, your dignity. This has happened to thousands of the men, women, veterans, and young adults we serve at Working Wardrobes. What do we do to help? We provide career development services, life skills workshops, job skills training. We provide the perfect interview outfit, and we get clients placed in jobs. Call Working Wardrobes, 714-210-2460. Donate, volunteer, invest, hire. I'm more resourceful than I thought. My suit can still make an impression. My video games are still game changers. And my lamp can bring others a bright future. Because when I donate my stuff to Goodwill, it helps fund job placement and training for people right in my community. Now my stuff gets a second chance. And will give someone in my community a second chance too. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at Goodwill.org. That's Goodwill.org. This message brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking with C Digital Labs CEO Andre Barangian about the importance of creating a positive workplace culture in emerging in emerging startups. So, Andre, what is the craziest employee <laughs> engagement activity you've ever participated in? You want me to only name one? <laughs> I've got a lot of crazy ones. I'll, I'll tell you a couple. Right, so, so one of the things I was mentioning earlier is that we we really kind of act like a big giant family, and um, so every single holiday that there is, we do something. So for Halloween, I'd say the bulk of the office dresses up, and so it. we all dress up. A lot of people make their own costumes. It's pretty crazy. Um, so to answer the craziest thing, um, there's a there's a day called Pie Day, and it's not 3.14, but it's actually the National <laughs> Pie Day, like the pie that you eat. And so I... Um, See, only someone with your background would explain that, because for me, it's like food. Engineers, right? Engineers. Not the mathematical <laughs> pie, the other pie, the one that you eat. So, so I get... Uh, one of my guys comes to me and says, hey, you know... Um, we're going to do a thing for Pi Day, and uh, we want you to participate. I said, okay, what's that? And they said, we're going to line up a whole bunch of executives, and we're going to smash you in the face with a pie, no way. like a cream pie, and then uh, we're going to film it and put it on social media. <laughs> I said, okay. Uh, are you sure? Uh, is, that, is, is, that, is that you want me to do it? Why doesn't somebody else do it? 
<laughs> and so, nonetheless, we did it, um, and we had a bunch of people lined up, and people were a little bit fighting over who gets to put the pie in my face. <laughs> And uh, so you some did of them, do it. some of, I did do it. Some of them were worried. Some of them were uh, were, were fighting over who's going to do it. Ultimately, uh, I got a big giant pie in the face. And if you look online, uh, you can see the slow motion uh, video of all the pie just dissipating oh, around okay. my head. Oh no! Yeah. So did it hurt? I've always wondered that. <laughs> no, um, they they didn't put anything in it. Just just the <laughs> shell and the and the pie. No 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 rocks, no rocks or <laughs> shrapnel or anything like that. So they were nice to me. <laughs> I've always wondered about that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I did see one of your posts for Halloween where some uh, it showed some of the employees in costumes. It was awesome. Yeah, it was every so year. Great. Every year. I love every it. Every year. I love it. I love it. So you have a great philosophy uh, when it comes to startups that you shared with me when we were preparing yeah. for the show. So can you share a few key points to building a successful startup? I, I think there's four things that you need, and this is kind of how we, we think about it. I think um, the four things, uh, I'll, I'll list them first and then expand on them. One is um, information. Uh, you need experience. You need a team. And you need capital. And so this might be pretty self-evident when you hear the list, but on the information side, um, what we used to do uh, years ago, at least I, I used to do years ago, is sit in a room and just try to figure out, boy, I want to disrupt uh, the retail business, so let's come up with some cool ideas and, and, and just test it out. Today what we do is we actually partner with folks that are in that industry so that we can learn the space and figure out how to create better uh, disruptive or even um, accretive solutions where we can partner with folks like that. So. Uh, so, so that's where we get our information. We really try to get knowledge from the industry. Um, the second thing is experience. Um, when I was very young, I, I, I didn't have a lot of experience, but I had a lot of time. And so I spent a lot of time creating that experience by being wrong many, many, many times. And it's the so, best way to do it, I think. <laughs> it, it is, but it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's really also hard. very expensive at some point, right? <laughs> so what, what we have is uh, our executive team is super, super experienced. And if you can, you can look them up there. They, they've been executives. They've been entrepreneurs. They've just been around the block, and they're amazing. And so they can draw on this vast experience that they've had and make very very informed. They may not be perfect. They may not make the right decision every time, but they can make very informed decisions when it comes to moving startups forward. Uh, and then team. Got to have team. We talked about culture, right? right. And, and, and it, we have to have folks that mesh together, work together well, act as one unit, because we are a little army trying to conquer a big hill, and it's really, really difficult. And so you have to have folks that have that chemistry and have that desire and that drive. Startups are not for everyone. You have to have a right. certain type of personality to go through the pain of a startup, but then also when you see the success of what you've created, it's, it's, it's pretty rewarding. And the last thing is capital. And so for us, um, you know, you, you, can, you can fund the capital from your own checkbook or you can partner with folks. And for us, we have a lot of uh, venture partners, venture capital partners that love working with us and investing in, 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 in the projects that we work on and the startups that we work on. I love it. Now, in this atmosphere that you've created at C Digital, where you are fostering new startups, yes. not the ones that you're doing yourselves, yes. but the other ones. So do you have an opportunity in that relationship to sort of impart your philosophy that you've talked about first yeah. part of the show and this philosophy with those startups to kind of help them get off on the right track, not just technology wise or whatever their product service is, but kind of the important stuff, the underlying. Absolutely. Um, we, we just have a, a certain way of thinking and, and, you know, it's, it's a very startupy kind of way of thinking. We, um, we, we, we get to the signal quickly. We get to the, the, we try to get as quickly as possible out of the fog of whatever it is we're doing in startup land and try to get to the signal. And so, um, so that includes operationals, uh, operationally, it includes culturally. Again, I talk about that a lot because right. bringing the right people together where there's less friction creates magic. When there's friction yeah. and there's you know organizational arguments and fights over who does what and this, that, and the other, that creates so much wasted time and energy that they can't, the team can't focus on the task at hand, which is trying to solve a problem. And so we, I won't say we're perfect, but we've figured out certain things. And what we try to do is share our knowledge and what we've learned over the course of time and the many startups that we've done and worked with. And we try to share that with our, our, our startup partners and basically say, hey, this is the way we do it. We suggest you look at it this way and see if it's good for you and then let them kind of run with it. I think that's great because I, I, you know, and I've read a lot about failures of startups from the employment law perspective on sure. why does that happen and, and from from that perspective. And I think that you mentioned two things. Well, experience, 
experience and knowledge, I think, are from an employment law perspective. Yeah. Because those are the things that if you don't know how to if you don't know how to foster that great environment, if you don't know the basics about how to manage people and how to comply with the law, it's a huge problem. And you do spend a lot of time dealing with the sort of interpersonal things that really take away from everybody's ability to just do the job. Um, so I think that's great. And I like this this idea that you're passing that on. Hopefully in years it'll make my job a lot easier. I, I like hope that. so. <laughs> I do too. I really like that. So I, we're, just about, we're just about running out of time. I want to know, what are your, just give us some final thoughts. Tell us, tell us some, impart some, some great parting wisdom for those that are listening. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know how much wisdom I have, but I, I, <laughs> I'm still working on amassing the wisdom. What, one of the things that I think when it comes to employees and employment and team members, um, I, I think a, a good kind of saying is, is, is to, um, you know, hire slow and fire fast. And right. that I might totally that might that might sound harsh, but I'll tell you why. The higher slow is I find that usually people uh, or companies hire, and it's uh, it's at a critical time. They they don't have a person or people, and they need to put somebody in the seat, and they'll just right. find a body and stick it in there. But well, they've we, grown from you know a hundred to a thousand employees. Exactly. It's like they're more worried about the focus tends to be the product and the service and the capital. Correct. And then the rest of that is just sort of, well, we just have to, we have to feed this. We'll just figure it out. Yeah. 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 The challenge with doing that, it goes back to what we talked about earlier, which is that whole culture thing right. is that, and, and, and friction. And so if you take someone and you just put them in there because they check a few boxes, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the right fit. So we look at things like uh, technical skills, of course. Right. We look at background. We look at, you know, where did you come from? Do you have the right history and so on and so forth? But we also do a lot of work on cultural fit. And what I find is that if we take our time and find the folks that have the right cultural fit, they just work together so much better that it reduces friction in the organization, which means we can be extremely efficient. And then on the flip side, if you have someone that makes it through the whole process and it turns out that they're just not the right fit. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a commentary on that person. It's just, it's just they're not the right fit. Then we say fire fast, right? Which is they probably also know that they're not a fit because they can tell. And we've been in many situations where I've seen that the other person knows. They're like, I, I, don't, I, I, can't, I can't do what you want me to do. I don't necessarily mesh with the culture, et cetera. And so uh, it, it's actually a good thing for everyone for us to part ways. And so we look at that as, you know, hiring slowly, taking our time and doing a thorough job. And then if we need to, firing quickly um, to make sure that we preserve that culture and that that, that uh, environment that we have. And that's, yeah, I've always said that. I get the weirdest responses from employers when I say, you know, if you have a problem, employee, and you see it, as long as it's not a wrongful reason, terminate them. Yes. You're going to save yourself a lot of trouble down the line because it's it's okay if they don't fit. That's you right. know, sometimes we talked about, sometimes right. it's a relief. Someone's like, oh, my, you know, I didn't know how to get out of this situation. Thank you very much. Now, I know that's not always the case, but it does happen. And I think that it's a little more prudent to do that. I think that people worry too much about the negative impacts of change as opposed to getting to the positive aspect. It's almost like a relationship. When you're in a bad relationship, right, you're kind of keeping each other from something, right? something better. Right. And so I've always likened it to that. You may be keeping this employee from something that's going to be much better for them and a better success for the business. Correct. Because you've, you know, you maybe said that the next person you get in there is going to be a wonderful fit and it's going to be so much better. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. I think you've created a great culture, and I love the philosophy. And I thank you so much for coming on today and sharing it with our listeners. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Great. If you want to learn more about Andre or C Digital Labs, check out the company's website at cdigital.com. That's C-I-E-D-I-G-I-T-A-L.com. You can also connect with Andre and C Digital on our website at sapphirelegal.com slash podcast and click on episode 13. I also want to thank our listeners for joining us, my radio angels, James and the Nave at Night, and Workplace Perspectives team extraordinaire, our engineer, Paul Roberts, with music provided by the very talented Stephen Versaloni. Be sure to join us next episode as we continue our discussion of employee engagement in the world of emerging startups with public relations professional, Robert Lopez. Thank you all for joining us on Workplace Perspective. Until next time, keep raising the bar. Boy, that was...
because you're you guys were just having fun and it oh, came good. through. <laughs> you know, when she first came in, she could do employment law. I thought, okay, I better get my eye shades on here. This might be a little sleepy sometimes here. <laughs> but she's done a really good job of uh, you and um, the other girl, Pot Stephanie Potter, Stephanie. were having a lot because you were friends. And, but this one was really cool. And I appreciate your honesty and openness to say, I know all this stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Too many people come in, oh, yes, I'm going to give you my five <laughs> I'm going to give you my this. And I'm like, okay. They just spew the stuff <laughs> off, and I can hear people tuning out. Yeah. It's when you get open and vulnerable and real and honest, that's when people just can't get enough of this that's stuff. True. That was really that's good. Awesome. Good. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It really nice works. Well. All right. That's it. Easy. Thank you. Easy peasy. Easy peasy, <laughs> as they say. I'm going to throw out an idea that uh, you can just think about. I know I'd. She's bringing in all these great people. I'm still trying He's to talk to Stephanie. He's pitching everybody I bring in. Stephanie was, and I definitely can talk about it. Um, Michael Solid. Do you know Michael Solid? Yeah, Fast I know him really well. Yeah. Okay, well, talk to Michael. He did it for about a year in here. He did a show called um, Fast Start Studio, and it was yeah. about entrepreneurial tips, yeah. entrepreneur highlights. And I, I think of it as startup stories. Okay. Because uh, this is storytelling. And then he had uh, Rattana Tucker, somebody sponsoring it, and then his life changed, and he couldn't, didn't do the show. Still likes what we're doing, but just wasn't for him. And I've always thought, I tried to get uh, Octane to try and pick this yeah. ball up, but they confused and wouldn't run it. They did a few shows. Somebody should be telling the stories and the tips and the ideas and the, the, all the stuff that we all go to a seminar of how to set it up and then we leave. Somebody should be telling them the time going stories. One of the most popular podcasts out there was a couple years ago. I forgot the name of it. Uh, I think it was by the production company Gimlet. And they followed a startup from beginning to a certain point. And they came in and said, we don't know we're doing this. We're not sure we're going to stay open tomorrow. We're, we're running out of money. Or this is a lot of fun. Or this is crazy. I didn't know. So we got to fire this guy. We don't know how to fire him. He's my cousin. He's my friend. Or real stories of real startups. There's a billion people that want to get into this space. And when I go hear the seminar, they're, they're meaningless. How did you start to come? Oh, it was easy. We got together, we raised some money, and now we're worth $100 million. Oh, gee, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> it wasn't that easy for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. I, there was it a guy. There was a guy. At one of the time, you should make this a topic for one of your shows, the fact that there are three or four generations in the workplace now. That's never happened before because yeah. we're living so long. And when you said that, I was like, oh, man, yeah, right. I hadn't even thought yeah. about that. So I went yeah, to this amazing. thing at Tech's uh, Coast Tech Space, and, or Tech Coast Angels, one of the things. And this young guy built up this company. He's getting ready to take it public. I don't know. They were some software thing. And they said, how do you work with different generations? We just make sure they're all happy. How did you raise money? I just make sure we're all happy. How do you handle <laughs> a, a, a remote offices? I just make sure they're all happy. I said, oh, come on. This was a joke. Is that, is that easy? That I've just been missing. We're all just yeah. supposed to wear party hats and just play sure they're happy. Yeah. <laughs> There is power in that. I, 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 you know, obviously, yes, I'm trying to sell shows, but I think we could build an audience around that, and I think we could build sponsorships around that. So. Well, that's cool. Let me give that some thought. I think, I think that's a, that's, that's a. Take my card if you have any. Where is? Oh, here. Yeah. Because uh, I just think that's a topic that every when you do a start when Tech Coast Angels or something does a startup, if you ever talk about start, a million people show up, and I don't hear much real information today. Yeah. It, it's, it ends it's, up being a lot of uh, it, it's a lot of obvious things. Like, sure, yeah. people should be happy, but what about what, let's go a little deeper? Yeah. What else is there? Right. I agree with you. Right. right. And, and the other question I've always had, I've always thought this should be a show for some. I mean, or a topic for show. What happens after you get the money? All these are about how do I get the money? How do I get the money? Now I got it. We're engineers. We're nerds. I don't know how to hire people. I don't know how to fire people. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. We had Wayne Lamb in here once, the guy who started with Yahoo yeah. Fish Taco. Yeah. He yeah. said the hardest thing was we had to realize we had to fire all his friends at some point. Yep. Yeah, that's and he's right about that. All had yeah. to go. And my relatives and my cousins, everybody that was working for nothing to help us start was holding us back at yep. some point. In time. He, that's, that's, that's so true. And I'm like, that wow, so I never yeah. thought of that. So real stuff like that, that what happens after you get the money? Maybe we, I should do a show on how to, ha how to fire your friends and family. <laughs> It's a friends and family plan. Yeah, the friends and family plan. Right. Exactly. You, you get 100% off. How did you really? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. You get 100% off. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Think about that. There's some topics in there for Cheers. you. Cheers. Well, All right. All right.
Welcome. Sorry we're a couple minutes late here. Welcome. This is Peter Hi, I'm Ashford. Peter. Good to see you. How are you? We'll put you right here. Paul, okay. Paul Roberts. Now, he's he's highly touted you as an interesting guest here. He's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't tell me your name, but he said, I got a really interesting oh, guest yeah. coming in this time. I'm like, you say that to all the girls, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. So what he's, what's he's touted here. Oh, yeah. I know it's the coolest looking car. You both got black leather jackets. I know. I stand up. I'm like, dude, did we call each other? <laughs> yeah. Same got shoes. Memo, except except his are polished. Mine, mine are used, used, used to, to polish mine. Who's used to be, Charlie? What? Used to, oh, probably used to be, though, right? At one time Some they were. Some they probably really were. The day that I bought them, I haven't polished them since the day that I bought them. Okay. I bought, it's funny, I bought these clothes in Milan. I bought a... Um, no, we had to say that. He, he, had to say he that. just couldn't let that 